G going back to Gemini, I'm curious uh, what the bottlenecks were in the development. Um, like, why not make it immediately one order of magnitude bigger? Well, look, first of all, there are practical limits. How much compute yeah, that yeah. can you actually fit in one data center? Sure, sure. And actually, we, you know, you're, you're, up, you're bumping up against very interesting distributed computing kind of challenges, right? When fortunately, we have some of the best people in the world on, on those challenges and, and, you know, cross data center training, all these kinds of things. Very interesting challenges, hardware challenges. And we have our TPUs and so on that we're building and designing all the time, uh, as well as using GPUs. And so um, there's all of that. And then you also have to, the scaling laws, you know, you, they don't they don't just work by magic. You sort of, you still need to scale up the hyperparameters and various innovations are going in all the time with each new scale. It's not just about repeating the same recipe. At each new scale, you have to adjust the recipe. And, uh, and that's a bit of an art form in a way. And you have to sort of almost get new data points. If you try and extend your predictions, extrapolate them, say several orders of magnitude out, sometimes they don't hold anymore, okay. right? Because um, new capabilities, they can be step functions in in terms of new capabilities and 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 some things just some things hold and other things don't so often you you do need those intermediate data points actually to to correct uh, uh some of your hyperparameter optimization and other things so that the, the scaling law continues to be true so um so there's sort of various practical limitations on onto, onto that um so you know Kind of one order of magnitude is about probably the maximum that you want to you want to carry on uh, you want to sort of do between each uh, each era. Oh, that's so fascinating. Uh, you know, in the GPT for technical report, they say that they were able to predict the, the training loss. Um, of, you know, tens of thousands of times less compute than GPT four. They could see the curve. But the point you're making is that the actual capabilities that loss implies uh, may not be so yeah, clear. Yeah, the downstream capabilities yeah, yeah, yeah. sometimes don't follow from the. You can often predict the the core yeah, metrics yeah. like training loss or or something yeah, like yeah. that. But then um, it doesn't actually translate into MMLU or, sure, or math sure. or, or some other actual. Uh, capability that you care about. It's, right. They're not. They're not necessarily linear all the time. I think we've got to push scaling as as hard as we can, and that's what we're doing here. And you know, it's an empirical question whether that will hit an asymptote or a brick wall. And there are you know different people argue about that. But actually, I think we should just test it. I think no one knows. Um, and but in the meantime, we should also double down on innovation and invention. And this is something that that that, that, that the Google Research and DeepMind and Google Brain have 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 you know we pioneered many many things over the last decade. That's something that's our bread and butter. And um, you know you can think. Of of half our effort is to do with scaling and half our efforts to in do with inventing the next architectures, the next algorithms that will be needed, um, knowing that you've got this scaled larger and larger model coming along the lines. What's been the biggest surprise to you uh, if you go back to uh, yourself in 2010 when you were starting DeepMind in terms of what AI progress has looked like? Did you anticipate back then that it would in some large sense amount to spend, uh, uh, you know, dumping billions of dollars into these models or did you have a different sense of what it would look like? We thought that and actually, you know, if you, I know you've interviewed my, my colleague Shane and 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 he he always thought that and in terms of like um compute curves and and then maybe comparing it roughly to like the brain and how many neurons and synapses there are very loosely but we're actually interestingly in that kind of regime now roughly in the right order of magnitude of you know number of synapses in the brain and 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 the sort of compute that we have but i think more fundamentally you know we we always thought that um, we bet on generality and learning Right, so th those were always at the core of the, any technique we would use. That's why we triangulated on reinforcement learning and search and and and, and deep learning, right, as three uh, types of algorithms that that would scale and um and and would be very general and and not require a lot of handcrafted human priors, which we thought was the sort of failure mode really of of the efforts to build AI uh, in the 90s, right? Places like MIT, where where there were very you know logic based systems, expert systems you know, masses of hand-coded, hand-crafted human information going into that turned out to be wrong or, or too rigid. So we wanted to move away from that. And I think we spotted that trend early and uh, became, you know, and obviously we, we use games as our proving ground and we did very well with that. You know, things like AlphaGo, I think was a big moment for inspiring many others to think, oh, actually these systems are ready to scale. And then of course, with the advent of Transformers invented by our colleagues at Google, you know, research and brain, that was the, then, you know, the, the, the type of deep learning that allowed us to ingest masses of amounts of information. And that, uh, of course, has really turbocharged where we are today. So I think that's all part of the same lineage. Um, I, you know, we, we couldn't have predicted every twist and turn there, but I think the general direction we were going in um, uh, was the right one.